Jim Napolitano said the border is safer now than it's ever been. When you hear her talk about the security of the border and it's more secure now, what goes through your mind? Well, she just lying through her teeth. It, it fits their agenda. And I will be the first to admit, we don't have the volume of people coming across that we did 12, 15 years ago. But the people we deal with today I feel like they're a lot more dangerous than they were then. When For the Record took cameras into Cochise County, few people were willing to speak, and many of those who were asked that they not be identified on camera. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll say this. You know, a, a lot of people were very vocal back in the in the 90s and, and uh, up, and, up until the last few years, but uh, because of the threat of, of cartel violence uh, and, and because of... Uh, of threats to people's families and, and, and their uh, well-being. A lot of people have quit speaking out about this because it is too dangerous. It's not our country anymore. We may be bound to the laws of our country, but we're living by the law of the cartel. I do believe, I mean, if they wanted my life, they'd take it right now, this instant. If I cross the line, they could take it in a moment. So I've lived in the same house for 70 years, and we have had traffic for 70 years. And we never worried about those people. They were coming to work. They didn't bother anybody. You gave them something to eat if they wanted it. But these people are different. They keep track of us. Our names, where we go. They've said, if you do not adhere to our ways, that we will kill you. We saw nine guys, we counted them, all running in formation. And they were all wearing black. We realized that it wasn't the usual illegal immigrants that we see. These were organized. Someone that's packing narcotics, you don't want to have anything to do with them. And you're outgunned. I've seen them walking through the pasture. My neighbor had already called and told me they were coming down the creek and they'd be coming across. You know, they got an AK hanging off their shoulder. This doesn't make you feel real warm and fuzzy. You don't want to confront those people. You just kind of let them go on their way. Tonight, in just a little while, um, we are going to have a special uh, for the record. It's now weekly, every Thursday night at uh, 8.30 Eastern Time, for the record. And uh, tonight it's borderless. We begin our search on the real story of what's happening um, on what used to be our border. But we're a borderless country now. To discuss this uh, with us and so much more is Tara Setmeyer. Tara was um, instrumental. In fact, Tara... If I'm not mistaken, weren't we together um, when uh, Campion and Ramos were, um, uh, were released? I know I was with their wives on the first day of my Fox show. Right. Um, we, I actually wasn't there. They, you had booked them ahead of time. Yeah. And we, it was inauguration weekend, so all of us were kind of out of D.C. I didn't want to be anywhere near Washington, D.C. while Obama was getting inaugurated. Yeah. <laughs> so I was out of town. Everyone, we were kind of all the people, the main players were spread all over the country. But you had already booked the wives because it was the last day in office for the president. And um, we got word, literally, I called Monica Ramos while she was sitting in the makeup room to let her know that uh, the commutation had effect effectively come down. And I actually personally walked uh, Ignacio Ramos out of federal prison along with his wife and his lawyer. Uh, after I promised I would do it two years earlier, I got a chance to walk him out of federal prison a free man. Um, I am so pleased to have you and Sarah Carter both um, on this staff now because that's how we first um, that's right. got to know each other Yes, was on that. And you have um, passion for the truth on the border tonight at 8:30 with for the record we see these um we see these ranchers um who are literally terrorized by these drug mm -hmm. cartels and they've called for help i i think and so does sarah that there's the, the there's collusion here with the federal government there's no help coming for these guys this is their plea why is it we don't ever talk about the ranchers you never hear their testimony at all when it comes to border reform because god forbid the american people actually heard the truth about what's going on on our border now i can say coming from a state that's not on the border i'm from new jersey you know i lived in washington dc until i actually went down to the border and saw for myself what what goes on and talked to the border sheriffs and talked to border patrol agents and got involved in that case i really had no idea the gravity of the lack of security and the mess 
that's on our border. And I think that's the case for most people who don't live in border states. You know, the, the politicians in Washington, there's a, there's a big business, and that's on both the Democrat and Republican side. There's a certain interest in allowing folks to come across our border, whether it's for cheap labor or whether it's for votes. There's a reason why our border is not secure the way it should be. I'm, I mean, I find it hard to believe that we can't get this right. Yeah. But if people knew these real stories and what's really going on, there's no way any talk of amnesty would be going on. Unfortunately, I think it's um, also now uh, corruption that is sure. involved as a, as a third leg to that sc right. school. Right. The uh, drug school. cartels have a lot of money. Um, let, me talk, let me switch gears a little bit and talk about Janet Napolitano. She announced that she was leaving, I don't know, a couple of months ago, maybe three yeah, months ago. Yeah, in July. Ago. Yeah, and if she announced that she was leaving, we don't have a number two person at the Department of Homeland Security. And now we don't have a number one person at the Homeland Security. Um, we don't have a top 15 persons at the Department of Homeland Security. Currently, what one is third, happening? Yeah, it, it, one third of the top 45 positions at the Department of Homeland Security, which is a pretty important thing. It houses 22 of our federal agencies from the Coast Guard to the Secret Service. 15 of the 45 top spots are either vacant or filled with an acting director, including ICE, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, and CBP, Customs can I, and Border can, Protection, can, can I tell you something, directors. Tara, I, I, that, does not, that doesn't sit well with me. Oh, me and, either. Uh, and I just have a bad feeling that that is, that is by design. What do you suppose is happening? What are, what are people in Washington saying? Well, I can tell you that when Janet Napolitano made her announcement, the White House was like, uh, okay, even though they knew she, admit, she, she wanted the spot at justice. People thought that Eric Holder was out of there and Napolitano was eyeing the Justice Department position. And then when that didn't happen, she said, well, I'm out of here. And the Obama administration was kind of caught with their pants down. They still don't even have a short list of legitimate people out by now. I mean, this is, they've had months to are do this. Are they really this incompetent? Yes, they are. I think they, there's a certain amount of, they, well, they never ran anything, Glenn. What do you no, expect I know from people? You know is, what I mean? So they is... don't know how to manage. There's nobody in there that says, hey, Mr. President, Department of Homeland Security, right. no one's running it. I think that those, those folks are buried down. They're the ones that, like the guy that's the acting, acting, acting secretary of, of oh Homeland gosh. Security, you know, he's got a big, decent resume. He's doing the day-to-day. -day. So you have the people that are kind of cobbling things together and keeping it together. But the overall bigger picture, you have such ideologues and people who are such demagogues here okay. that they, they don't know what to do when it comes time to have to make a real decision. And okay. I, having a vacancy like this at the top of Homeland Security, not only is it bad for the border and that aspect of it, how do you expect any kind of real border enforcement uh, uh, bills to get passed when there's no mechanism to enforce it? But it also sends a pretty serious message to our enemies that the doors are wide open. Okay. We don't have anybody. This is a rudder, rudderless ship. There's nobody driving the ship here. Okay. Thanks a lot, Tara. We'll talk again.